The chair will recognize Mr. Michaelwitz of Boston. The chair would ask all members to be seated and pay due attention to the gentleman from Boston as he gives his maiden speech. Please. Court officers will clear the aisles and close the doors, please. Chair would ask all members again to take their seats and pay due attention to the gentleman at the microphone. Mr. Michaelwitz of Boston. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and through you to the members. I rise in support of House Bill 3588, an act relative to unpaid municipal fines, uh, affectionately known by some of us as the Green Ticket Bill. Uh, the third Suffolk district, which I represent, is not only one of the most historic districts in the Commonwealth, but also one of its most diverse. I've quickly learned that 10 different downtown neighborhoods with 10 different distinct voices present challenges that can make it tough for anyone to find common ground across the board. But one item that rings true, whether you're, whether you're a lifelong resident of the North End, a new family moving up uh, in the South End, a young professional up on Beacon Hill, or for that matter, anyone across the Commonwealth, is an enhanced quality of life is something that everyone strives for. House Bill 3588 takes a meaningful step towards tackling that issue by better regulating the trash that is put out onto our streets. This trash does not necessarily come from the restaurants in the North End, Chinatown, or the South End. This garbage doesn't always come from the tourists walking along the Freedom Trail. Instead, a large portion of it comes from the residents themselves that choose to ignore the rules and regulations set by the city of Boston. As it stands, if trash is put out improperly, then the city can issue a citation in the form of a green ticket. Each municipality has its own method, but none have methods to actually collect those fines. This act equips those municipalities better by providing an opt-in system that would more adequately enforce those rules. This act does not change the existing policy of how violators are issued those citations. It just finally puts some teeth into those tickets. If a violator, after an appeals process, does not choose to pay his or her fine, then the bill will roll over onto the property owner's property taxes the following year. This would assi assist with the attempt to chase absentee landlords that are usually the biggest violators. Just in the city of Boston alone, a three-year period ending last year saw 45% of, of citations haven't been paid out and close, to only, and close to $5 million in fines remained uncollected to this day. Since we are at a point in time, we are watching our cities make cut after cut and many of us are crying out for new revenue, it would be irresponsible for us not to provide them with the necessary tools to collect on revenue that is currently sitting on the table. I want to thank, I want to thank the chairman, uh, of, <laughs> chairman of Worcester and his staff for the work on, on this bill. I'd also like to thank the chairwoman from Back Bay for, uh, I know she's got a, uh, another bill on the agenda today, but she was very helpful in this bill. And uh, I'd also like to thank the Boston delegation for their support of this bill. And thank you, Mr. Speaker, and to the membership for um, welcoming, with, welcoming me with open arms into this institution. I ask for your support of House Bill 35. 88, a bill that I am proud to have worked on in my previous role in this chamber and now proud to stand here in support of. Thank you. And when I, and when I ask the matter to be taken up, I ask for a call of the yeas and nays. Mr. Michael Witz of Boston asks when, a call, when the vote be taken to be called by the yeas and nays, all joining with him will please arise. First division, 40, sufficient number having arisen when the vote is taken, be taken by a call of the yeas and nays. Roll call having been ordered, a roll call be called forthwith and will remain open for five minutes. Court office will summon the members and tell them that a roll call is in progress and will be remain open for five minutes. No, no. 
Chair will point out to the members there will be two consecutive roll calls. Again, the chair will point out there will be two consecutive roll calls. Members are asked to stay within the chamber. Have all members voted to wish to do so?